Ukraine's new mobilisation law comes into effect today as Kyiv struggles to boost troop numbers on the front lines. The new rules reduce the age of male conscription from 27 to 25 and impose penalties on draft evaders both at home and abroad. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky says his troops are struggling to hold back Russia's latest offensive near Ukraine's second largest city. He hopes the new law will help relieve battle-weary soldiers. Here, every recruit counts. These volunteers are training to join the 3rd Assault Brigade. For them, the mobilisation law will mean that more Ukrainians can join them when they go to the front. Many soldiers have been fighting for more than two years without much respite. It's not the ones who are scared of mobilization, who are being held hostage in this situation. But the soldiers who are working in teams of three, where they should be ten. They are the ones who are trapped and they need a break. That's why we are here. President Zelensky has acknowledged issues with staffing and morale. But drafting legislation to boost troop numbers has been difficult. The law was amended more than 4,000 times, and the final bill is a watered-down version of the original. The most notable law change is the age of mobilization, which has been lowered from 27 to 25, adding 100,000 potential conscripts. The bill also targets those who evade service. Fines for draft dodgers have been increased fivefold and all men at home and abroad are obliged to update their registration details and carry their documents. Eligibility for military service has also been revised. People with certain medical conditions who were previously deemed unfit could now be called on to fight. The recruits now in training do not know how long they will be in uniform. The bill has been criticised for leaving issues of demobilisation unresolved. Early drafts envisaged troops would be rotated every three years. Authorities say they will address these issues in the coming months. Now, meanwhile, Zelensky is warning that Russia's latest push in Ukraine's northeast could be the first wave of a wider offensive. Almost 10,000 people have fled from the Kharkiv region, which has faced intense bombardment by Russian troops in recent weeks. Russia claims to have seized another small village near the city of Vovchansk as Ukrainian troops struggle to halt the Russian advance. Right, let's cross over to DW correspondent Max Zander, who is standing by for us in the city of Kharkiv. Uh, Max, we hear Russia has made substantial gains in the last week and a half. What sort of information, though, are you getting about the situation in the region as it stands? Right, Anthony. So, um, at the moment... Um from what we know, fighting is still very fierce. Fighting is continuing at the nor northern border um, with, uh, with Russia. The Russian forces were able to advance five to 10 kilometers into uh, Ukrainian territory in, in different parts. Fighting continues. Um, Russians were able to take some villages and fighting in the city of Vovchansk is still continuing outside and inside the city. The Ukrainians were quick to react. They were able to um, redeploy and bring in forces from other parts of the front line and slow that advance. Um, and until now, we're able to prevent a breakthrough through uh, their lines of defense. However, the situation um, still remains very, very serious. The Ukrainian president has warned that the fighting um, that could intensify in the upcoming, in the, in, in the near future, that uh, multiple waves could follow, and also that uh, there are worries that perhaps in other parts of the northern border with Russia, for example, in the Sumy region, where Russia has amassed troops on the Russian side of the border, there could be a following attack. In addition to that, the situation here in the city of Kharkiv, where we are right now, also remains um, very, very difficult. Uh, Russia keeps continuing attacking with uh, rockets, with guided bombs, keeps attacking um, civilian infrastructure and industrial facilities, as well as uh, residential areas. Yeah, as you say, uh, shells and uh, guided missiles coming in. Uh, it brings me to the question, what is life like in the city of Kharkiv at the moment with Russian troops within touching distance? Right, so the people of Kharkiv have gone through a lot. You remember at the beginning of the full-scale invasion, the city was pretty much under siege until the successful liberation of the area. So people here are used a lot. When talking to people, they don't, they, 
the situation in the north is certainly on their mind, but it hasn't moved many to pack up their things and go. Most people want to continue with their lives. In general, the situation here, the atmosphere is, is full of contrast. Today was a beautiful day. You could see people in the park, relaxing, enjoying themselves, but at the same time, you have constant attacks, air alerts, and successful attacks in various parts of the city. Yesterday, there was a very large attack with, uh, with resulted in four deaths and uh, 31 people injured. Today, we were at the site of an uh, of a bomb attack after this attack happened um, in a residential area where um, a family um, in a residential home was injured. Five people were injured, including two children. And I spoke to a member of the prosecutor's office on site, and he told me that uh, this is a common situation right now. Um, in the last six months, there have been 200 of such attacks here in Kharkiv, so this is something that the people here are dealing with on a daily basis. All of that, Max, as a new recruitment law comes into effect. Uh, it's drawn mixed reactions, though, from war-weary Ukrainians. Why is that? Right, so most Ukrainians understand that soldiers are needed to defend the country and that uh, the Ukrainians need to register the people and, and find out uh, what, the, what the situation is in order to build a strategy. It's not very popular among many soldiers who have been serving since the beginning because there is no demobilization issue is not included in this law. So uh, the draft law included um, this, this point, whereas people who would be fighting for 36 months would be uh, able to be relieved. Um, in addition to that, um, some health requirements have been removed. So um, people with, uh, um, with, with uh, uh, health problems um, in, in certain cases will still be able to, uh, to, be, to be drafted. And in addition to that, it puts a lot of stress, a lot of pressure on many of the men who, who do not want to fight. Um, and it's something that uh, you, you're talking to, to people is uh, something that, uh, um, yeah, that, that they think of on a daily basis. DW correspondent Max Sander in a very rowdy Kharkiv. Thank you so much. Roman Goncharenko is with DW's Russian service. Uh, uh, Roman, good to see you. Vladimir Zelensky is worried that Russia is going to step up its offensive in Ukraine's northeast. It's made substantial gains in the last week and a half. Tell us what is changing for the Russians on the battlefield right now. Well, the, fight, the fighting continues, and it looks like the Ukrainian army is uh, trying to stabilize the situation. Uh, they seem to have um, slowed down the Russian advance uh, in uh, in the Kharkiv region at two points where Russian forces were able to advance a few kilometers and uh, capture some villages. And uh, the town of Vovchansk is um, in Kharkiv region and uh, there is still fighting there going on. Ukrainians are trying to push back. Um, and in general, the war of attrition continues. Russia is hitting uh, Kharkiv itself, the second largest city of Ukraine, um, uh, destroying its industry, destroying the infrastructure. This is happening every day. And um, this is what uh, also is, is a major problem for Ukraine. There are now power shortages all over the country, not just uh, Ukrainian citizens, but what's most important, Ukrainian industry, and especially the military industry, uh, also has uh, to um, slow down production or uh, change in working hours because there is not enough electricity. So uh, this remains uh, a major problem. And what the Ukrainian president was referring to, that um, in summer, a lot of experts um, expect uh, new waves of attacks, not just in the mm. north, but especially in the east, in the region of Donbass. Uh, Roman, there's all this pressure on Ukraine and its forces, as you say, but amid all that, there's a new recruitment law that's coming into effect today. But it's controversial, isn't it? Tell us why. Well, um, it is a very important law because, um, as we've heard in the report, and everybody knows that Ukraine needs more men, more soldiers. Uh, so um, Ukraine hopes to do this now with this law, but it will take some time. It's controversial, for I think, for two reasons. First, um, a lot of Ukrainian servicemen and women were expecting um, a, a rule about demobilization. So they want to know when they can go home. Um, there was an initial um, idea to uh, write down 36 months or three years, but it was, um, it was left out. 
And, then, and now uh, some of them are frustrated. There is an open debate about this in Ukraine itself. And the second reason is that now more people with um, maybe not so perfect health could be recruited. Uh, Ukrainian may now face uh, penalties. They can lose their driving license, uh, other penalties. So the pressure in the Ukrainian society could grow. That was Roman Goncharenko from DW's Russian service. Roman, thanks so much for that.